So, can you write 12 points? First of all, our father, but, but uh, leave a gap to write some extra stuff. So, a heading, our father in heaven. And then a little bit of a space open. Holy is your name. Not like that little kid in the, in the children's church. He said, uh, our father who are in heaven, hello, what is your name? <laughs> hello, it to be thy name. Very old English, hey? Holy is your name. Number three, your kingdom come. Leave some space open. Number four, your will be done. Number five, oh. on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> I'm teasing you. Okay. Give us a day of daily bread. <laughs> That's number six. Give us today our daily bread. That's number six. Not our daily pizza, Emil. <laughs> forgive us. Just write, forgive us as we forgive. In a summarized way. Forgive us as we forgive. That's number seven. Number eight. Lead us not in temptation. And number nine. Deliver us from evil. Lead us not in temptation. Number eight. Number nine. Deliver us from evil. And number ten, yours the kingdom. Number eleven, yours the power. The power belongs to you. Yours the power. And number twelve, Yours the glory. Yours is the glory. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. And if you want to, forever and ever, amen. Amen, that means let it be so. Let's be careful where we say amen. Hey, Many times, telling the guys, we say, oh, there's a lot of rubbish out there. When I agree, the fact that I can see that, I, I agree with that, but I don't say amen. Because with amen, I say, let it be so. But there's a lot of rubbish out there. You know, we are struggling with a lot of things. Amen. No, 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 not amen. We are struggling with a lot of things. That's like, let it be so that we will struggle with a lot of things. That's what you say when you say amen there. You can say ouch, but you don't say amen there. You say amen on every sentence that's the truth. You can say amen because you say when you say amen, let it be established in my life. Let it be established in our lives. Let it be established in the city, in this church when you say amen. Let us understand the power of the word amen. Why will that be a word forever in heaven? That the angels will cry, hello? The elders will say, the nations will cry and say, amen. It is so, it is established, it will be established, it will be forever. Amen? Amen. That's why sometimes I will say that, but please don't say that as a ritual. But get into a habit that you will speak to establish. I honor the truth, I recognize truth, and I want it to be established in my life. Therefore, I say, Amen. Instead of, I want it to be established, I pray that it will be established, and let it be so in my life, and all our lives, let it be so.
Instead of saying all of that, you can just say amen. And that is then what you say. Hallelujah. So the first, the first, this is now the prayer and what I, what I got, the 12 words that I just wrote down. The first one is dream. Dream. My brother, my sister, God had a dream and God has a dream. And in the essence of that dream is he wants to be called Father. And because he wanted to be called Father, he wanted to position himself as a father towards a group of something that he will create. And that group he called human. Adam and Eve. Me and you. Me and you. He created nations. He created people that will call him father. And he will call them children. God wanted more than what he had in heaven. He dreamt about something more than heaven. And that is me and you. And that dream will be established. Our father in heaven. That is the first sentence. When you go to the father, Jesus says. When you go to God, address him in the following way. Address him, first of all, according to his desire, according to what he wants, and that is our Father. Amen? Let it be so. For God so loved, what? Be careful of that word, hey? We said it along many times. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He didn't love the world as we have created the rubbish out there. Because the word says many, many, many other times, you need to hate the world. You need to turn your back on the world. The world must be dead to you, and you must be dead towards the world. This is his dream world. For God so loved his dream that he gave his only begotten son, so that his dream can become a reality. So that his dream can become a reality, and that is so that you can be saved, just to be saved from hell. No, not as a trick for you not to end up in hell. No. He's so passionate about his dream. He's so passionate. He's so love. Love is his passion. Amen? He was driven by himself because God is love. God was so driven by himself that he gave that he gave his only begotten son. So driven for this dream in his heart to become a reality that he gave his son. He gave up his son so that we can make his dream a reality through the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is trusting you with his dream. God is trusting you with his dream, and that is called eternal life. For eternity, his dream will be established, and that is for you to know him and the one that he has sent. That is eternal life, eh? John 17, 3. This is eternal life. This is the eternal dream established in your life. And some of that eternal, eternal dream from your father today, tomorrow, next year, going to be established more and more and more. Your father's dream going to be established more and more through you as you come to walk with him, to know him, to see him in the word, to understand through the Holy Spirit his guidance, to do it for him, with him. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Dream. May every dream that you have be founded in the place where you and your dad can dream together. If you and God as your dad cannot dream together, that dream is not from God. Sorry, there's only one other place from hell even though it was a good idea. There's a lot, millions and trillions of good ideas that hell can produce. He will not give you this bad idea. Come on, man, then you recognize the devil and you tell him, food sack. But he will come with a good idea, with a fake 10 rand. He's not stupid. He will not come with a fake 11 rand. <laughs> Are you with me? Okay. Dream. Second, holy is your name. The word that I wrote down was passion. And I said, God, what do, uh, how do we get to holy is your name? And that is what I said already. God is driven by himself. 
Holy is your name. You are holy, uncomparable. Holy means cannot be compared with anyone. Cannot be compared with anyone. Holy is your name. No one like you. Uncomparable. So every passion, God is driven, Father in heaven is driven by who he is. His character. Love, joy, peace. God says, me, my, my joy, that's your strength. My peace, that's your protection and your guidance. My love will be your driving force. Because that's who I am. I'm driven by my uniqueness. I'm driven by my holiness. I'm driven by my uncomparable uniqueness. I don't know. I don't find the words for that. But you with me. So that's why Paul can, can say, my life is Christ and die is gain. Because I dr I'm driven by God. God is my life. God is the song in my heart. God is the reason for living. In God I find myself and Him in me and in Him is the life. The reason for living. Holy is your name. My passion is found in Him. When I'm in Him and He in me and I understand that, the passion will be there. The performance against the passion. The performance. My passion can be drained. Because in my performance, when you are in performance, you expect others to perform. And they are not going to perform the way that you want to perform. Your child is not going to perform you want him to perform. You as a dad, as a mother, you're not going to perform the way. Husband, wife. Oh, man. And that performance, we can drain one another, especially. Performance is the first word under the title religion. Religion. To kill all the life. To kill all the passion that is from him. Religion. So religion will bring you to perform. I'm under the law. That's what the word says. I'm under the curse of the law. I'm in a performance. And my performance is cursed from the beginning to the end. Because I cannot do it right. There's one who performed. And that is Jesus Christ. And I can only f be found in his performance. I can boast in his performance. And that is the cross. Hey? Galatians 6.14. I boast in his performance. I have nothing to boast in my performance. That's why Paul says, I will not boast in anything else except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's passion, passion, passion. My passion is Him. I wrote that song some other time about that. You're my passion, my desire. Okay, number three, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Vision. I wrote the word vision. My brother, from God's dream. He had a dream, but then he was driven by himself, his passion. So that what? Into the vision that he has. Now he's, the first two will stay forever. His dream will stay there forever. His passion will stay there forever because he is who he is yesterday, today, and forever. His vision will be fulfilled. Now that is the first one up to the last two. His vision will be fulfilled. Your kingdom come. His kingdom will come. His kingdom will be established. That will be fulfilled. Amen? Your kingdom come. So whatever you do, my brother, my sister, you're in your vision, the vision that you have, His kingdom must come. The vision of Canaan, at the end of the day, it's Canaan must come under God's rule. The nation of God is taking the land. But in that land, the enemy will know the presence of God is there. Because the fear of God is on the people. If the fear of God is on the people, the presence will be there. If the fear of God is on your life, his presence will be there. His authority will be there. His kingdom will be established. So you go. In the nine, we're not going to that. Then... We will take some time. In the nine Beatitudes, first one. First one, nine Beatitudes. First one is, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the guys, Axistoch, all the Axistoch guys. No. Blessed are the poor in spirit because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
And then the ninth one, blessed are you, are they, you when they insult you, when they talk behind your back, when they gossip about you, for his name's sake. For you will inherit the kingdom. The kingdom is mine, but he's here. There's all two, three, four Sundays. The kingdom is here. Oh, I'm tempted. Um, the word says, Jesus says, the, go and tell them the kingdom is near. Then when you come with honesty, that is, those, the poor in spirit, is those who are humble enough to be honest about their situation, to realize I'm nothing without God. Those guys that have the guts to be honest and know that I have nothing without God. This is the kingdom. Those guys, the kingdom will come in here. When you're honest enough to realize you're on your way to hell, and if it's not for Christ, you will be nothing. You're gone. When you had that level of honesty through the Holy Spirit, you received Christ, and the biggest miracle on earth happened to you. You became a child of God. Are you with me? And the kingdom that is near, repent because the kingdom is at hand, the, the translation says. The kingdom is near. Then the kingdom where came where? In you. In you. The kingdom. And then, the word says, with the kingdom in you, seek the kingdom. But, but, but it's already in me. It's in your spirit. But your soul, your emotions, your plans. You must seek that what is already in you. You must seek the final rule from the king that is in you. Remember, you're the man of Christ. Do, do hold the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of God in your spirit. Amplified, you have the mind of Christ. Is here. You have the mind of the king. Let's say, I have the mind of the king. You have the mind of the king, my brother, but you need to seek the counsel. You need to seek his thoughts. You need to seek his emotions that's in your spirit. We need to seek that. Seek the kingdom. The rest will follow. The king will sort out the rest. You seek him. The battle belongs to the Lord. He will provide. You, you follow the shepherd. Grace and mercy will follow you. You don't seek the green pastures. You don't seek the still water. God will let you lay down there. He's going to lead you there. You focus on him. Amen? So he's in here. The kingdom is near. The kingdom is in. You seek the kingdom. And then as you seek the kingdom, if you don't, become, if you don't have a certain attitude like a child... If you're not teachable when you seek him, you cannot inherit the kingdom. That's the other one. You've written that down also. That's number four. You inherit the kingdom. You enter. Sorry. Sorry, not inherit. You enter the kingdom. If you don't become like a child, you will never enter the kingdom. Kingdom is near. Kingdom is in. I seek the kingdom. I enter the kingdom with the attitude of the child. And from that place where I've entered the kingdom, I come with a, there's the authority of the kingdom working through me, and that is, I inherited the kingdom. But when I've inherited the kingdom, you don't know, you know what you do with the kingdom. You take your crown and you lay it down, and you say, yours is the kingdom. You have the amazing honor to lay down your crown before him and say, yours is the kingdom. Amen. Oh, God, uh, you will reign as, reign as king and priest. But as king, you have that opportunity to express your kingship, to lay down that as a priest. As a king, lay down as a priest. Amen. Oh, God's going to help you. Oh, hallelujah. I suppose just to mention the twelve. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Your kingdom come. That's your vision. In your vision, God must be found. The king must be in the vision. What does that mean? Your kingdom come. God has the final say in your vision. God has the final say in your vision. What you see, if you cannot see the king in that, it's not from God. If you cannot see the final authority from God, you have an excellent idea. You have a vision to do what? You better know if God says yes or no. And many times we don't know God's dream. We don't necessarily know his passion. But we are here, we have a vision. 
and I must see is God in it. And I don't know why, but I must trust him that his passion and his dream, that he says it's not fitting into that passion and dream. Therefore, this is not him. If he says just as king, don't do that. You're not allowed to do that. Why, Lord? Just because God said so. And you must have the faith that his passion, his love is for you. I know the dreams that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. To prosper you, not to harm you. To give you hope. But to prosper you and to hope is because of his passion for you. So you must believe in the integrity of his passion. The integrity of his character. The integrity of his dream. That's why when you are in that place, the kingdom is here. But you're walking and in your own kingdom, man. You're a child of God, but you follow your own ways. Your emotions sometimes can be king. Not anymore in Jesus' name. But the emotions, the circumstances, your success can be the king, can be the final say. There's a thousand things that can be the final say in you, except Jesus Christ. But as you seek his final say, as you honor his final say, as you enter into his final say, you will inherit his final say so that you will speak the final say of God. That where you come, the authority comes from your mouth. The authority comes from your strategies. The authority comes from your presence. Amen. The dream, the passion, the vision. Father in heaven, holy your name. Kingdom come. Next one. Will be done. Your will be done. It's a very difficult word that I got. Choices. <laughs> okay. That's sarcastic. Choices. You know, our problem is, hey man, with many choices, many choices that we make, too many times it's in performance towards the father. Because as a son towards a dad, you can make a lot of choices in performance. Towards your wife or towards your husband, towards your children, towards whoever, towards the Lord. You can make a choice. I choose not to fall in this rubbish again. Yeah. But where's the foundation? You must believe in his dream. You must take his dream for your life. And he will give you the strength. Through him you're an overcomer. You are more than a conqueror through him. 1 John 4, 4. You have overcome. Because he, or who he, he is, is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. And if I understand more of the dream, of the passion, of the kingdom, his final authority in me, then my choices can be from him. Then my choices can be godly. So with this prayer, God is laying foundations. Jesus is coming. He's laying foundation, and on that foundation, build this. On that foundation, build that. On that foundation, build the next one. Okay, because Father had a dream, he was driven by himself as a passion. A vision came forth. And out of that vision, he made certain choices. And he made the choice to say, first of all, let us make man. Let us make man. And then, among us, you, my son, to lay down everything and to die on the cross. And my heart in you to be bruised. And Holy Spirit will help you to be guided there. But then as you come, I will send the promise, the Holy Spirit then, to mankind to work out their salvation with fear and trembling, what you will go and establish on earth. You with me? So that what? So that our dream can be fulfilled. So that we will go and make our home with them. Are you with me? Choices that the Trinity made. First to create us. Secondly to tidy up our mess. And for those who work with him to come and live with him. Okay. There's a few others also about the Trinity. You know that, hey? There's some people say, oh, where is about the Trinity? In Isaiah, hey, say, you remember Isaiah? Isaiah heard the Lord saying, who will go for us? Who will go for us? And me and you today, here am I, sent me. 
Hear your calling from Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And then another one, just for the sake of we have all this time, you know. And the other one was where? Where did the Trinity also, where's the Trinity manifested? Marius? <laughs> for a Dyson dollar. Jesus is Okay. Excellent. Luckily, I offered it to him, not to you. <laughs> yeah, in baptism, the son baptized, Holy Spirit came like a dove. Father said from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Understand your identity in God, even through baptism. It was like I identify with the Father in what he has for my life. And the Holy Spirit is there and heaven will confirm about who you are. Amen. All right. The choices. The next one. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. The word that I got was desires. I have a certain desire. But my brother, my sister, my desires can be very, 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 very dangerous. Because in my desires, it's not I desire the wrong. I desire, desire to flip. I desire to, you know, the, your, not your humor, but it is your himir. It's your anger, your anger, your temper, all those stuffies, um, all those stuffies. Yeah. That's desires. I have a desire to flip. I have a desire to say what I want to. I have a desire to, I don't know. And the, and the danger is, we don't see it as I have a desire to be depressed. But that's actually a desire. Because a lot of that I can start to choose. Later I'm stuck in it, and then I must work myself through the Word and the Holy Spirit out of it. So the one depressed, don't sit in condemnation, please, in Jesus' name. Because all of us are sitting in some or other stuff that we must get out of. Are you with me? But, God, what is in heaven? I desire that here on earth. You have a desire? Make sure that God is in his emotions, in his excitement. That's, that's true. God is excited about what you desire. Let's say, my God is excited about what I desire. God is very excited that you are angry and you're going to do something now because he did it also at the temple, you know? Smack them. No, no, no. That's manipulating the scripture. May God help us in Jesus' name. But, but you are with me. So you check up. You do a check up of your emotions. Hello? I have a desire just to be at peace. And I know it will only happen when my the debt is gone, and I have this house, and I have that extra car, and I have that, and I, I can do that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Deceived in my desires. Deceived in what my heart can desire. Be careful, the heart can be misled the most, the more than anything, anything else. Your heart's desire. Check up your heart. It can be very dangerous. Make sure the desires of your heart is found because you started to come to know Father and you as Son. Because you come to know who He is as eternal life. Because you come to understand His kingdom. Because you have respect for Him, you honor Him. You will honor Him, you will respect Him. And from that place of respect, you will know how to live with respect for your own life, respect for others. And that's the only way that you can inherit a destiny. Destiny is vision. Hello. Honor father and mother, and you will inherit the vision, the land that God has for you. You will inherit the vision if you understand respect and honor. That I respect His kingdom. Your kingdom come. King, the king has the final say. Amen. And so that from that place, from that place, understanding his authority also, I'm safe in my desires. And then it will be true. Just surrender your desire unto the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
And he says, submit your ways unto the Lord. And then he will give you the desires of your heart. Uh, are you with me? What was the previous point? Your kingdom come. Your authority. That what you want. I submit my ways unto you. Your lordship. I don't back chat. I don't argue. I don't reason. What you say, that goes. Pew. And if that respect and honor is established, the desires in your heart will be pure. It will be right. It will be accurate. And God will give you the desires of your heart on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. That's number five. Number six. Ooh. Give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. Why must you ask? Because the Father knows what you need. The Father knows what you need. If the Mosi, if the, what's the thing? What's the Mosi? Sparrow. If the sparrow don't ask for bread tomorrow, he will die. Because he didn't ask, so he will receive, according to the Bible. You don't find something like that. That's not how, Father. If you don't ask tomorrow, all the provision will be gone. No. What it's about? It's, the word is dependency. Dependency. God wants you to acknowledge that you are dependent on him. You acknowledge that everything is from him. You position yourself in a place and say, God, I acknowledge that without you, I choose to do nothing. I don't want any provision if it does not come from you. Give us today our daily bread. God, we want to receive from you. But in this, in the, this decision to be dependent is not from my physical bread, just it's the word of God. Give us today from your word what we need, your day. This is the air I breathe. This is my daily bread. It's all Peter's fault that he's saying those songs this morning that I'm doing this now. <laughs> this is my daily bread, your very word spoken to me. You will not live. First temptation from hell to Jesus. Stones into bread. You shall not live from bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So you talk about dependency, you declare, God, I need your word. I need your provision in the physical, but I need your word for my soul, for my spirit. Amen. Amen. Because whatever you're going to ask now, give us, forgive us, lead us, deliver us. All that that has now to do with your needs, what you need, starts with dependency. Starts with, we need your word. For what we're going to build, Lord, on the basis of your word. Based on your word. Give us today your word, Lord. I don't want to go and do it if I don't have your word. There's no life in my vision. There's no life if your word is not a foundation. I need to eat your word. Amen. Oh, give me an amen. Amen. Give us today our daily bread, dependency. Forgive us as we forgive. Yes. Be careful with that one, hey? God, as I forgive my husband or my wife or my dad or my son or my, or my uncle or that guy or that pastor or my boss, or, you know, as I forgive him, you know, I'll ask forgiveness after I killed him. No. As I forgive Forgive me, please, in the way that I forgive Peter. In the way that I forgive that auntie. I forgive that man, that woman in my family. The way that I forgive them. Please, Lord, forgive me also in that way. <laughs> hmm. We need the Lord. Amen. Forgive us as we, as we, in the way that we also forgive. Oh, Amen. The chicken is here in the church. She's enjoying the message. It's okay. It's really okay. Right. Take a shot with the camera also from the chicken, please. No. Okay. Give us today our daily bread. But, but, but you can focus here again. Thank you. Chicken has a word, but I also have a word. If I must compete with the chicken, then we must get it out. I think. Are you coming 
I didn't do an altar call yet, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, I don't believe we must. There's a chicken in the church. Okay. <laughs> Who prayed for a chicken? Give us today our daily bread. <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, where are we now? Um, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive. I've written there the word that I wrote there. Remember these 12 words? Hello? Chardonnay? These 12 words. I've wrote this down before I even think of, even thought of the, the prayer. And the word that I wrote after dependency is strategy. So God is a dream, driven by his passion, who he is. Out of that, a kingdom vision. And from that kingdom vision, he made certain choices. For his desires to be fulfilled. But for that, now, mankind, first of all, if you want to see that happen, first of all, be dependent on me. Secondly, strategy is through the blood. You can write it there. There's a blood strategy. Forgive us as we forgive. If there's no forgiveness, there's no strategy, there's no, there's no dream to become a reality. I choose, God, I need you. Without you, I'm nothing. Therefore, I'm coming to the place of forgiveness through the blood. I first choose to be dependent. I need your word. I've heard your word that, God, you so loved me that you gave your only begotten son. Therefore, I'm going to surrender, and I'm going to take my forgiveness, and I'm going to forgive myself, and I'm going to forgive others. And for this process, it will always be through the blood till the day that I die. This strategy will always be there, that only through the blood I have boldness tomorrow. Boldness that I'm forgiven. Boldness to walk in a vision. Boldness to enter the throne room. Boldness only through the blood. They will overcome through the blood of the Lamb. That's the main strategy. Your main strategy is through the blood because you're going to mess up. I'm going to mess up. We're going to make bad choices. In Jesus' name, not anymore. Just a little bit. No, we don't speak it. I don't know how you must say it. You must be honest, but you mustn't speak it. We will always need the blood. Hello? Boldness through the blood. Let's say boldness through the blood as strategy. So your strategy, you are full of strategy from heaven. When you understand these principles and you build it in your life, you will always be full of strategy through the blood of Christ. Hello? Through the cross as center point, and you can have boldness with your strategy when it's through the blood. It's pure, it's holy, it's beautiful, it's clean. Your strategy is clean. Let's say, My strategy will be clean through the blood. God has the blood strategy, blood covenant. Okay. The next one that I wrote down was action plans. From your strategy, you get an action, action plan. I have a strategy. Okay, this is what I must do. But now, practically, what is my action plan today? Today, I'm going to see that guy. Today, I'm going to do that. Today, I'm going to speak to five guys. Hello. It must go into action. There's a lot of people that have visions, unfortunately, in the past. Not anymore in the future, we pray in Jesus' name. They have a lot of visions. And from that, a lot of strategy. But practically, the action plan. Oh man, 40, 50 years later, there's still that vision and that strategy. But absolutely nothing happens. Because if the strategy does not work through the blood and the fact that, God, I am nothing without you. I need your strategy, and through the blood, I can receive your strategy. Hello? From that place, I go in a place of, I'm dependent. Through the blood, I can conquer, I can conquer, and I'm in humility in my action plan. Humility is there in my action plan. Uh, hello? Action plan is part of it. Okay, how are you going to behave today? You can write there, light of the world. 
You can write there, salt of the earth. Make sure where you are, it's not rotten. It only rots if the salt is not working. The flesh is frot under the salt nie gewerk. The blue fountain is frot because the salt did not work. The nation can be frot. I don't know what's frot in English. Rotten. The nation can be rotten to the core with the corruption and the that and the that because the salt did not work. But God has called us as salt in the politics, in the this, in the that, in the that, wherever. Are you with me? That people are not dying of a lot of chamors because the salt did not work. And now we can honor the kangreen, we can honor the rabbis, we can honor the, what's the abscess? Abscess is a abscess. Yeah, the abscess. But, and we can talk about that, but we must go back to basics. Where did the salt have to work? Where are we supposed to give taste? I know some don't like salt, but in principle, it's supposed to persevere and give taste. Okay, let's go from there. Let's go from there. Um, what's your know? Action plan. You find your action plan as salt. You find your action plan as light. You find your action plan as the letter of Christ. You remember that, letter of Christ, 2 Corinthians. You find your action plan as uh, ambassador of Christ. You're writing on your heart immediately, it seems to me. Great. Ba ambassador of Christ. You're, you're finding your strategy as co-worker with Christ. God, what are we going to do together today? Okay. Find all of that, and action plans will be in line. Number nine. Deliver us from evil. Now, I wrote here my daily routine or daily destiny. My daily routine or my daily destiny. Uh, the most of excuses come into today. I don't have time today. I will do tomorrow. Today I cannot do this. Today I cannot do that. Today is following me. The day is just, it just went. You know? When you look at today, it was just, what happened? And you can accomplish a lot, but that you accomplish with God, for God, through God. Did you do what you do? Does it have eternal value? Or all your success can be burnt up the day and you are saved as through fire. But what you did, what you built, excellent, and you said it was for the Lord. But it didn't happen for God. God, I prophesied in your name. God, I prayed for these ones. I prayed for the, those ones. They were miracles. They were this. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't recognize myself in you. That's part of the context of that scripture. Tomorrow, you know, this year, how much of what you've done can God recognize from himself in what you've done? How much? Okay, well, God says, I, I, don't, I don't know you. I don't know what you've done this year because I wasn't in it. I don't see myself in it. Even though it was fantastic. You didn't pray for the devil. You prayed for people. You prophesied. You did this. You did it a lot because you thought, this is for God. Ah. Deliver us. Deliver us. We do need deliverance, not first from the devil. The devil is already out in, at this stage. Our problem here is ourselves. The biggest enemy is yourself. But who, who do you have today? Yourself and God. So you, you. Today, going to make a choice where you going to do something. And you decide, today will happen like this. Then I will rest, then I will that, and rest is from the Lord. But deliver us so that today will be Christ, die will be gain. Remember that verse? Okay, please. Today will be Christ. Okay. The scripture says, today, when you hear my voice. Everybody say, Today. When I hear his voice. In Revelation, uh, quite a few times, God is saying that today if you hear my voice. Jesus said, today if you hear my voice, because I will not be here tomorrow. I'm going to heaven, I will spend, send my spirit. But today if you hear his voice. 
be delivered. Why? At the end of the day, yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Yours is the kingdom because, and this will also again stand forever. The first two, three will be standing forever. His dream will become a reality. His passion will be there forever. His kingdom will come and it will be established. Your kingdom will reign forever and ever and ever. But there's a point where his will will be done. On earth as in in heaven, the desires will be fulfilled. The dependency will be fulfilled so that I can understand to live with him for eternity. The strategies will come into being. The action plans will happen. My daily destiny will be found in Christ so that what I've built more and more will have eternal value. So that what? All of that will be fulfilled. So that what? It was the kingdom, the power, and the glory. In the kingdom... You will always have authority as kings. We will reign with him as kings in his kingdom forever and ever and ever. Yours is the kingdom where I will reign as a king with you as king of kings. As king of kings. Start to come into that eternal value tomorrow. That tomorrow you will reign with a king of kings in your situation. And with authority from the king of kings. You walk into that place and things must, do, must fall in line because the voice of authority came through when you opened your mouth. Amen. Yours is the power. The power is where? You will receive power, Acts 1.8, when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Priest. You're a king, but you're a priest also. A priest, why? You're only a priest. Because you're in his presence, and his presence is in you. You're only a priest because of his presence. There's no other way. Otherwise, you're a priest from uh, some other demon, demon, some other chamor spirit, evil spirit from hell. But you will be a priest for someone. Because you will serve, you will interact with the presence of God or the presence of the devil. The presence of your flesh, the presence of the spirit of the world. But you will interact because you are a spirit. And your spirit will interact with spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? That makes you different than an animal. You're not a baboon. Why? Because you have a spirit that will interact with spirit. But don't have fellowship with demons, child of God. God spoke to the children of God. Not to have fellowship with demons. Because you can have fellowship. You can have relationship with evil spirits from, your, from what is inside of you. But my spirit must connect with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit testifying my spirit. Romans 8, you remember that? We stay there. But as a priest, yours is the kingdom we declare as kings. And billions of kings will declare that you are the king of kings. But as priests, we will declare you are the high priest. You entered where we could not enter. You could enter because as a, the perfect lamb, as the high priest, you offered up yourself as an offering. The high priest. And because of the high priest, we can be priests. We can come in your presence. We can live in your presence. And we can experience the power of God, the energy, that power of God. Do you belong the energy that energy, that life, that power that is in us is because of you, the high priest. Yours is the kingdom, we as kings with authority. Yours is the power, we with intimacy. Authority, intimacy. As priests, the power of God will be there. When you have intimate time with God, you spend time with God, the power will be there. You wait on God, you will... With wings as eagles, you will mount up with the guidance of the Spirit. The power will be there as you wait as priests. Are you with me? And yours is the glory. Last one. What is that? Okay. At the end of the day, so that you will be the man, the woman that God has called you to be. So that you will be human. So that you will be the human being God has called you to be. Towards creation, crown. Towards the Father, Son. Towards Jesus, the Bride. Hello? All through the Holy Spirit. That has a desire to be in you and through you. Amen.
And in that place, my brother, my sister, coming back to the original pattern, let us make man. That dream of let us make man. Number 12, yours is the glory. Glory is his beauty. His beauty on you. His beauty on you. The beauty between God and you. The beauty in him, in you, over you. His glory. Arise, shine. For your light has come before. The glory of the Lord has arisen upon you, Isaiah. Rise, my brother, my sister. I, I challenge you, even through this prayer, to position yourself in all these facets. I was so excited because I just, I remember I just, I was driving in the car on the way, on the N1, and just these 12 words. I just wrote it down. And then, whoa, God just opened it up. I really believe. Go with these principles, please. And become the man, the woman God has called you to be. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness that you will walk as the image from God in the likeness of God as a reality and his dream will be fulfilled we call it like a circle I don't want to say a circle of life there's some guys that call the baboon to a human being also a circle of life but they that second hand okay are you with me okay